Fred Phelps and Westboro Baptist Church give religion a bad name. Is something you hear over and over again. I once posted a question about Fred Phelps and Yahoo Answers, and I got that as a response. The response had nothing to do with my question. Some people think just because the word is there, they can say anything they want about it, relevant or not. Fred Phelps gives religion a bad name. What a concept! He gives religion a bad name. And what the hell do the pedophile priests do? Westboro Baptist Church is right about going after the West at after the pedophile priest. This is a serious problem that few people cared about. You were too busy drinking your beer to care, and they care. So they get points for that. I've been tempted to do that myself, so I applaud them for doing that. A lot of atheists don't have a problem with Fred Phelps because they say he's showing us what religion really is about. One person said Annie Laurie Gaylor of Freedom From Religion Foundation created Fred Phelps in her basement. But religious people feel differently. They disassociate themselves from Fred Phelps. Who's worse, Fred Phelps or pedophile priests? Hmm. Why don't they disassociate themselves from the pedophile priests? Hmm. In their film, Hate Mongers, Westboro Baptist Church talks about how, interestingly, the religious community was more harsh against them than were homosexuals. Isn't that interesting how that works? Usually it is that way, or at least many times it is that way because people don't want to be associated with something. It makes them look bad. When I went to Africa, I seemed to have more problems with the Peace Corps than did some of the people there. Perhaps that was because I wanted to make a good impression as an American and they were doing the opposite. And some people just lump all Americans together. So I have to face the bad reputation Americans have. Likewise, that could be what religious people are thinking. In that film, they show religious people coming after them. One pastor swings a hammer at them, interestingly enough. One scene is really interesting to me. In this scene, some guy in very ornate dress is trying to block them. And he's actually the one marching and the person with the camera, he tells them, you're impeding my progress. He tries to block the other people, but they do a very interesting twirl, a spin. It takes skill to pick it, apparently. It's very interesting to see that. I think that scene signifies a whole lot. These people are dead set on doing what they want to do. They're picketing. And they're not going to let anyone stand in their way. And I think that is very admirable. I mean, I agree with everything they do, but man, their perseverance is something exceptional. That is the perseverance of the saints of Calvinism. I brought in Dan Barker from the Freedom From Religion Foundation a few years ago to debate a Christian at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. I was a moderator. And the next year, I debated the other guy who debated Dan Barker. And I debated him again the next year. After one of the debates against the other guy, a couple of women from the high school came up and we went out to dinner. They were Christians and they wanted to convert me, but they also wanted to be my friends. I was telling them how I found it interesting. They were harsher against the Christians, that is, against Dan Barker than they were against me. Now, it could be partially personality, but I said blunt things as well. She made an interesting point. Dan Barker, if you haven't ever heard of him, used to be a Christian minister. And then he became an atheist. It was a process he underwent, but ultimately he became an atheist. 
she said these Christians are threatened by him because he shows them that what they seem to think is strong faith is threatened when you become an atheist. Thus, the fundamentalists look at somebody like Fred Phelps and they hate him. They go after him because they make him look bad. Is he making them look bad, though? As I've talked about in other commentaries, I read a book about projections. The book put it in a very interesting way. It said, there are these people in the world that we react to. We can call them informants. They are Their very existence seems to negate something we believe, said the book. For example, the book said if you believe something can't be happy and then there's somebody living happily in that way, then that negates your view. The fundamentalists really hate Fred Phelps because he shows fundamentalist religion for what it is. I grew up in a fundamentalist home and my dad and stepmom believed in the same God as Fred Phelps. But they don't hold up signs to say God hates you. They tell me God loves you. They tell me that God who's going to send me to hell for mere unbelief loves me. Fred Phelps doesn't say that. He shows that God for what it is. A God of hate. He doesn't give religion a bad name. Undeservingly. He is merely bringing out what is already there. What is already in existence. Fred Phelps is not giving religion a bad name. He's just showing us what it is really all about. The website, the right to be wrong dot net, which defends Westboro Baptist Church's right to protest, said it admires how Fred Phelps just comes right out and says it because a lot of other Christian fundamentalists who tone down their rhetoric become millionaires. He said the the dude the webmaster said if Fred Phelps would have done that, he would be a millionaire today. I think there's a lot of truth in that. The fundamentalist churches believe what Fred Phelps believe. They believe only a certain number of people go to heaven, only people that believe what they believe. Now, they're not Calvinists and they don't believe necessarily in such a limited number as Fred Phelps does, but they still believe a limited number. They believe Gandhi is riding in hell. So I look at Fred Phelps' video news of all these figures burning in hell, and guess what? That's what the fundamentalist churches have been telling me when I grew up in that tradition. I don't have a problem with Fred Phelps half as much as I have a problem with these other fundamentalists. I love how Fred Phelps tells the fundamentalists they're going to hell. That's just desserts for all the times they told me I'm going to hell. It's just desserts for they them being so arrogant, thinking they know everything, for telling people they go to hell and then tell me and telling them they love them. Hmm, that's not right. And Fred Phelps is doing a great job at showing us what fundamentalist Christianity, all those millions of followers, really believe. And they hate that. They don't want that coming out. So they block his progress. But it will come out, my friends. Good job, Fred Phelps. Keep it up.